Yeah, hello everybody, and uh, yeah, welcome to uh, Prometheus Day, Europe 2022. Uh, my name is Ramon. I work for Timescale, uh, and um, and today I'm going to be talking about correlating data from different sources, and in particular Prometheus and Open Telemetry for faster troubleshooting. Uh, I've been working in the you know building observability products for the last uh, few years, and. This is a, you know, a challenge that I've always encountered you know, as I you know, talk to users of those products is that they don't typically use just you know, one tool. You know, they use a lot of tools. And if you just look at the uh, observability cloud native landscape for, uh, for all the different tools that are there, which are, by the way, not the only ones that exist. This is just part of the community. There are a ton of them. And you probably are using more than one. And uh, quite often the challenge is that you're, having, you're, you're getting, collecting data and getting that data into uh, different systems, and you have to correlate it somehow. So the first, the first issue is that interoperability, interoperability is key. And, uh, and in particular, this is about data. You know how you can get the data, the telemetry, the metrics, logs, and traces uh, flowing through different systems so you can more easily correlate the data. And, and with that, hopefully also a troubleshoot problem faster. Uh, luckily, uh, CNCF is sponsoring and supporting uh, two standards that have you know, a lot of adoption and a lot of momentum. So we have, on the one side for metrics, we have Prometheus uh, with its Prometheus exposition format and the uh, open metric standard that is for metrics. And then uh, open telemetry for metrics, logs and traces. And you know, Prometheus obviously very widely uh, adopted and uh, open telemetry uh, is a standard that has a lot of momentum. You know, still you know, a lot of building happening with, um, uh, but it's the second, you know, most active uh, project in the CNCF, and it's also the second with the most contributors. So there's definitely a lot of momentum, you know, on both sides. Uh, the question is, okay, as, you know, time goes by, you, most of you will probably end up having data that is generated using those two standards. So how do you correlate the data together? So that's what I, I try to cover here. Before I start, I just want to paint a picture of what uh, high-level architecture of the system would look like. So you have your services and infrastructure, and you're generating uh, Prometheus metrics out of them, and they go, you know, into uh, into Prometheus. And in this case, you know, the, you also store them in PromScale, which is, you know, a long-term uh, uh, storage for for Prometheus. So you can do long-term analysis and things like that. But the key thing here is that as you start adopting Open Telemetry as well, you'll have metrics and traces that come from Open Telemetry. And Open Telemetry doesn't have a backend; you have to store it somewhere. The first thing is that there are metrics there. You already have Prometheus. You know how to use it. You probably want to have your data in there. So there, you know, uh, the first thing you have to do is how do you convert your metrics from open telemetry into Prometheus? So luckily, there is this component called the open telemetry co uh, collector that does a lot of wonderful things. But one of those things is can convert data from a lot of different standards via something. You can receive data from a lot of different standards via something called receivers, then process that data to do things like sampling or batching the data. And then you can export that data to a lot of different solutions, one of them being Prometheus, you know, via exporters. And so here what uh, this uh, architecture is showing and this configuration of the open telemetry collector is that it's getting metrics, open telemetry metrics, and it's uh, transforming them into Prometheus metrics and sending them to Prometheus via the Prometheus remote write exporter. Uh, and then for traces, the only thing it does, it does some processing, and then it still exports it uh, using uh, uh, the open telemetry format. OTLP stands for the open telemetry uh, protocol. And so in this case, traces are being stored uh, in PromScale. And because PromScale supports you know, Prometheus metrics and open telemetry traces, we're storing all the data there. And then we're connecting Grafana to it so we can query it. And you can query uh, all met your metrics using PromQL. But PromScale is built on top of Postgres and TimescaleDB. So you can also use C uh, SQL to query both metrics and traces and do some you know, interesting correlation. So let's talk about metric and trace correlation first. Uh, one very common way, or at least the one that is uh, most uh, typically uh, uh, talk that we typically talk about, is correlation via exemplars. So did you have some example of you know, Python code that is instrumented with both uh, Prometheus and OpenTelemetry. So here we're creating a histogram uh, metric uh, to measure uh, the duration of API requests to our service. And, um, uh, here we're recording a new open telemetry span every time the random weight uh, endpoint or the random weight method in that uh, API gets called. 
And so in order to correlate and use exemplars in this case, what we do is we add additional metadata when, when we add the, you know, the duration to the Prometheus, uh, when we add an observation to, the, uh, to that histogram that we created for API duration. And so the exemplar is, is this piece here. It's a piece, typical piece of metadata, set of attributes, in this case just one, that references data that is outside the metric set. Uh, in this case, it's you know, a trace, uh, the trace ID. And so when you do that, and you get the metrics you know, from the Prometheus endpoint of that service, this is what you get. You get the typical, you know, on the left side, you see you know, the typical uh, you know, um, exposed metrics, you know, Prometheus exposition format. Then here you have some additional information, which is, has the trace ID and then you know, some of the things like the duration of that trace and, and you know, the timestamp. But this is, this is the ID, this is the thing that allows you to correlate. It's an example you know, of a trace that fell within that uh, bucket of the histogram. And so when you are in Grafana, for example, Grafana does, support, does have support for exemplars. So you run a query, a PropQL query, to do the 19th percentile on that histogram using the uh, histogram quantile function. In Grafana, if you enable exemplars, which you know is this thing here, which I believe is enabled by default, if there are exemplars that are uh, were uh, sent to uh, to Prometheus of, or PromScale, because PromScale also supports that, it will show you data points that you see here. Those are the exemplars. Those are individual traces and how long they took. And so, if you put your mouse uh, over one of those dots or you click on it, you'll get this uh, pop-up here. And if you click on this button, then you can jump straight to the trace. The hope here is that you have a, you know, you, you, you're trying to get an example of a trace that took, you know, a certain amount of time within, you know, it's within, uh, you know, the, uh, the percentile that you're looking at, and then you can see, or the, or the bucket, you know, that you're looking at, and then you can see uh, where the time is spent, as long, obviously, as that trace is representative of all the traces that fall, you know, within, within the bucket or within that percentile. So that's, that's the whole idea here. It will help you Instead of you know like trying to figure out okay what traces uh, were generated and, and when, when this metric had these values, you can actually jump straight from one uh, from metrics to uh, to the traces. The other way, which probably is simpler but still you know really important, is correlation via labels and attributes. And so, uh, Open Telemetry has a concept of uh, attribute, and it's the same as a label in uh, Prometheus, basically. And so. The only thing you have to do if you have your service was maybe already instrumented with uh, Prometheus metrics, when you add traces, don't forget to add maybe those attributes that you're using you know, in, your Prometheus, uh, in your Prometheus metrics. In this case, you know, endpoint and instance. You know, it's a very, as you see, it's very similar syntax to do this. Again, it's a Python example here. And so when you do that, you can do things like that. So this is an example, this is a dashboard where you, are, you have a filter at the top, you are filtering by service, and um, and what it's showing is uh, at the top you have metrics, you know, and this could be quite, you know, using PromQL and you're showing those metrics and charts. But at the bottom, you know, especially the two on the, uh, on the bottom uh, right, is showing squaring traces. So you can actually see performance of your service, you know, with the three golden metrics, but also traces and how long they, uh, you know, the slowest traces, so you can jump straight into those. And maybe even errors, you know, there is error information in trace data, so you can see which ones are the most common. So anyway, you can correlate, you know, visually, you know, that data in a dashboard. Uh, other things you could do, actually, in the case of PromScale, because you have SQL, you could actually run a query that returns, you know, all the uh, um, uh, hosts where there, are, there were uh, traces or spans that had the most errors, and then do um, uh, a subsequent query, all, all, you know, all, all, or, or a join, to retrieve, you know, all the um, uh, plot, you know, in a chart, the, the memory consumption on those hosts. So you can actually try to understand uh, if uh, there is a problem, you know, uh, uh, that, you know, memory maybe is growing or peaking at some point. Even farther, you could actually do another join in all of that in the same query to just retrieve the exact processes that were consuming the most memory at that point. And that gives you, very, that gets you very quickly, you know, from spotting a problem here to actually uh, getting, uh, you know, very uh, uh, much deeper understanding of what could be the source of that problem. So using labels and attributes actually is very powerful, especially if you can do joins on, on the data. Um, another one is metric correlation. And for metric correlation, one, the first thing you have to take into account is that uh, OpenTelemetry metrics and Prometheus metrics, they have different types of metrics. And so they need to be mapped. 
and here you have the mapping. I won't get into detail, but another thing to keep in mind, and there may be some types that are not, uh, that you cannot map. And an example of that would be open telemetry has an exponential histogram, you know, that doesn't have a way to map it into Prometheus metrics. And that is defined, by the way, in the spec, you know, of the, uh, the open telemetry spec, and there were, you know, a lot of discussions between open telemetry and Prometheus projects to come to, come to this mapping and, and definition of, of the metrics. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind, so make sure that you're using metrics that you'll be able uh, uh, to convert so that you can, you can map them together, especially if you're going to be storing them in, uh, in Prometheus. And so again, with metrics, probably the, you know, the only thing uh, most likely is available is you have labels, and so again, you want to be able to correlate with labels and attributes. So here is the same thing. You see code. This is the same code as instrumented with a Prometheus uh, client library on the left and with the open telemetry SDK on the right. And except the beginning, you'll see the rest is actually fairly similar. You know, it's the same. You define the metric. There is a name. There is a description or documentation in the case of the Prometheus um, client library. And then you just increment the counter, adding some labels to it. You know, in this case, it's for, you know, we add the, uh, the name of the API endpoint, which is add product, as an example. And um, if you do that, then uh, you can start correlating uh, metrics again in a dashboard. You know, you could be filtering data from both Prometheus and uh, Open Telemetry. So in this case, most of those charts, uh, Grafana panels, are from Prometheus metrics. But the one on the top right is actually from uh, a service instrumented with Open Telemetry that is reporting metrics. And so you can show and filter and see in the same dashboard uh, uh, for a specific service, as an example. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the telemetry for, um, uh, from coming from open telemetry as well as seeing telemetry coming from Prometheus. And so just uh, to wrap up, uh, tool interoperability is key. And I actually, uh, you know, at the moment, it's, uh, I'm really happy that we're saying, you know, there is obviously so much momentum with Prometheus uh, for the metric side, but now with open telemetry as well, especially for traces, because uh, that gives us, you know, the tooling and the foundation that we need. Um, and then, you know, you have to think about planning when you're doing instrumentation. Plan it carefully to make sure that you'll be able to correlate the data uh, uh, in the future, especially by uh, using consistent tagging across uh, signals, maybe thinking about using exemplars, and, uh, you know, also choosing your metric types carefully, you know, so you can, you can do the mapping correctly. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, by the way, we have a booth outside, just outside, so if you want to talk more about this, you know, I'll be sitting around and I'll be happy to discuss. Thank you.